Well, friends, a very warm welcome. We're pleased to see you today. My name's Sam. I'm the minister for um, Trinity at Four. And whether you're here for the first time, if you're visiting, if you're back after a while, we're pleased to see you today. Um, we meet all together. We've got communion today for about an hour and a quarter, and then there's plenty of time for tea and coffee. Uh, there's some food for the children as well um, after the service. So I hope you'll be able to stick around um, for that time um, as well. Let me start by reading a verse from the Bible which says this, we love because God first loved us. Um, this is a wonderful truth. God loves us. And those of us who enjoyed celebrating Easter last weekend, this is the centre of it all. At the cross, Jesus dies to take all of our sin because he loves us. And that changes us that we might love him um, as well. So um, I'm going to open in prayer as we start today, and then we've got some words we're going to say all together as well. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Father, thank you that you love us, and how we pray that we in turn would love you. And uh, even in this time together today, draw us um, to yourself, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to start with an old prayer. This is a, a prayer that was written, um, well, about 500 years ago. Um, but it's a wonderful prayer asking that God prepares our hearts as we prepare to meet with him today. So let's say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen where we're going to continue in song. So please do stand as the musicians lead us.
I think you're welcome to come back forward if you'd like to. I'm going to ask Peter to come up. This is uh, Sing Jesus' Name.
grab your seats and grab your places, young people. Um, uh, Vic and Jamie are going to come and tell us about something they've been up to over this Easter holidays. Okay. Okay, so along with a few families from Trinity at Four, the Henschels went to Word Alive in North Wales. Um, and uh, the tagline is Walking in the Word. So this is a Christian uh, residential uh, holiday for families or anyone. And um, so we went with these two little girls. And so uh, there's. Uh, we met up with some other Trinity at Four folk, went to the beach, um, and uh, you know, there's lots of stuff, lots of fun things for the kids and everything. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the kind of teaching stuff, and Vic will talk a little bit more about general life at, at uh, Word Alive. So, um, the teaching program is fantastic. There's so much, in fact, that uh, you cannot do even 5% of it. They have morning meetings uh, where they have a sermon series. Uh, we were going through uh, Acts and looking at four, the four cities, some of the cities in Acts. And then uh, they have various seminars that they run in the mornings as well. We went to uh, the one on adoption, where we were looking at the doctrine of adoption through the Bible, uh, which was super encouraging. And uh, that's while the kids were in their kids' groups getting their teaching. And then they run more things in the afternoon. Uh, I know that Sam was involved, for instance, in running a seminar on the place of music in church life. And uh, then they have evening meetings as well, uh, where I uh, went to one of them. There was a fabulous talk from uh, one Samuel. Um, so I got a huge amount out of it. I felt really built up in my Christian faith uh, from our time there. So they have um, the evening celebrations are, there's two of them, 6.30 and 8.30, and um, a lot of adults go to, there's a lot of singing. Um, so there were 1,100 children, um, I don't know how many adults, but 1,100 children and a lot of adults, um, and we fill a huge marquee. But they also have um, a time of singing and teaching from the Bible for the families at kind of 5.30. So here's a little clip of that, what that looked like, if we can play it. And so our kids went along to these, and, and they also have their groups in the mornings as well. So this is awesome cutlery, right? Yeah, so awesome cutlery led the music at the, uh, the kids' on. So they were great. Um, and Eva was in Trailblazers, and Annie was in um, Transformers. So Eva, do you want to tell us what you liked about Word Alive and um, what it was like in Trailblazers? Um, we... And at Trail Places we watched um, a clip about an Amazon about an Amazon family who lived in Tanzania and they they used to live in Scotland and they lived in Tanzania and then they did the they did the man with us and then and and they did adult swims because of Do you remember the memory verse? Yes. Do you want to tell us? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So, as you can see. <laughs> So as you can see, the young people followed the same track teaching in Acts as we did. So they were learning about how it's our mission to tell people about Jesus and the wonderful gospel and saving message he has. So if you think you might like to come to Word Alive next year um, and join in some of that awesome fun. Um, she also didn't tell you about the bouncy slides, face painting, um, like bucking bronco, the whole lot um, of lots of things the children can do as well. Please do talk to us or the Nimmos um, or the Brewsters who were all here this, this year. Um, and it would be great to see lots of us there next year. Great. Okay. Come on, girls, come on. Thank you very much, the Henshaws. And Andy Cowan and a few others have got an update on Life Group Sister. I don't have any slides, but I do have Emily. If Emily is. Uh, oh, she's great. Um, yeah, brilliant. As. Um, a new school term starts off. This is a great chance to just to mention life groups, put them back on your radar, um, and invite you if you would like to be part of one to come and talk to me. So I thought 
I would get Emily to come up and just um, give us a flavour of what it's like. Emily, um, what happens on a typical evening at Life Group? Describe it for us. <laughs> so in our Life Groups we start off with tea and cake and then we discuss our week. Um, and then we get to pray um, for a, and then open our Bibles and then we get to learn about whatever piece of text. Um, we've recently been learning about how to love our church, which is really important. And then we get to pray for each other. Great, thank you. Um, one night a week, that's, that's quite a big time commitment. So why is it worth doing? Why would you recommend to somebody to join a life group if they haven't already? Um, well, one thing that's really helped me is I get to ask loads of questions if I'm not sure on anything, even if the topic is quite heavy and quite dense, we get to discuss it and it's a very much, very open environment and very friendly people. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so as I say, this is to put life groups on your radar. If you're not part of a life group, um, they're starting up again this term. We're studying the book of Malachi together, which should be really encouraging, really exciting. Um, and it's a great way to get to know people as the church grows and gets bigger. It's a way of making the bigger church a little bit smaller and praying for it and encouraging um, one another in a smaller group. Um, there are groups meeting at different evenings of the week, different times of day. Um, so there should be something for everyone. And do talk to me if you'd like to be part of it. it might not be right for everyone. Um, it's certainly not the mark of Christian maturity or anything like that, but a really encouraging thing. And I would warmly recommend it to you. So. Fantastic. Um, our kids are going to head out for their groups now. Um, if you're not sure where your kids are going, don't panic. Peter is going to be standing at that door and can direct you where to go. Let's pray as our young people head out. Father, thank you so much for um, the time that we're going to have together now around your word. Thank you that you are a living saviour, Lord Jesus, and that you speak to us in the pages of the Bible. And so we pray whether it's young heading out or um, the rest of us staying here, that we'd all listen carefully uh, to what you have to, to teach us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. Well done, you young people. Have a great time. And we'll see you back a bit later for communion. Let's uh, spend some time in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can uh, call you, uh, as we trust in Jesus, uh, that we can call you Heavenly Father. Thank you that we are united with Christ and we're adopted into your family. Thank you for that incredible privilege. And thank you that you love your children and we can know that you are always for us. Thank you that as we're brought into your family, we have a new deep connection with the other Christians in our lives. And we can call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come into your family, you give us a new identity. And yet so often... We live in the old way, as though we were not your dearly loved children, but living for ourselves. We are sorry. Help us to love the things you love, and to hate the things you hate. Help us to live lives passionately for you, rich in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness and self-control. Please work in us through your Holy Spirit to make us more and more like Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up our church leaders. Please sustain them in their roles as they serve our church family. And give them faith, love and wisdom to shepherd your flock. We pray for all those struggling with the cost of living crisis as strikes sweep across the nation. Please bring peace and resolution to those disputes. And please provide for everyone in need. Help those with more resources to be generous with what you've given them. And we lift up the people of Sudan and Ukraine with all the fighting in their countries. Please restore peace. Give protection to your people through your goodness and sovereign power. Comfort those in grief with your love like an ocean. And come, Lord Jesus, make everything new. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So the reading is from John chapter 21, which is on page 1090, 1090. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out, got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumour spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If ever one of them was written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your ever-present and everlasting love. As we come before you today, pour out more of that love, we pray. Transform us. Amen. Sam just wanted me to say a few words about myself. I'm John. Um, until a few months ago, um, along with uh, Jill, my wife, we ran a, a Christian charity called the Christian Healing Mission, trying to encourage people to encounter the Jesus that I still believe heals today. Um, but we retired at Christmas, and since then, most of our energies have been taken up being uh, grandparents, the latest of which arrived on Friday. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty good, I can tell you. It really is. I probably won't have a, a show of hands on this, um, but I wonder, have you ever really mucked it up? Are there occasions in your life where you got it wrong, where you blew it, and you just know you made an absolute mess up of things. Um, I was going to sort of perhaps share a few of my own, but I haven't got that long, so I better not really. But as we look back over those moments, and sometimes they make us cringe just to think about it, I suppose the question is, how do we... How do we find peace after that? How do we move on from those moments? And that really is at the heart of that reading today. It's the, the account of the meeting of Jesus and Peter after Peter had really blown it. 
and he knew it. I went back really to that first Monday Thursday at the Last Supper. And if you can piece together the events of that supper from the four Gospels, it, it was going to be a very special meal where Jesus would share his heart with his closest friends. And during that time, Jesus reveals some quite shocking things. First, he says, one of you, my closest friends, will betray me. And then he says, all of you, actually, will run away. And um, Peter makes a kind of very defiant statement, basically, well, if they run away, that's up to them. I won't. In fact, I'll die for you. And uh, surprise, surprise, Jesus was absolutely right. One of them did betray him, and the rest, including Peter, all ran away. And Peter had been told by Jesus, actually, that very night, he would deny knowing Jesus three times. And he did. And in Luke's telling of the story, there's a very painful moment when, after the third time that Peter denies Jesus, it says, the Lord turns and looks at Peter. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. He knew. He knew he had failed his friend and he'd failed God. And then we read you know, the, the events of what we were celebrating last week, Easter. And the news ripples round. Jesus is alive. Peter himself saw the empty tomb. And, and I, I guess Peter had two quite conflicting thoughts. The first is, yes, he's alive. My friend is alive. The second was, I wonder what he'll say to me when we meet. Because I guess that sense of failure really did grip him. What, what was this risen Jesus going to say to Peter when they, when they met. And this is the, today's reading was the account of that meeting where Jesus restores Peter. I want to just share three, I think, very beautiful things from this, this story. And the first is this. It is a story of restoration because that is what God does he restores he doesn't reject we're probably all familiar with this term that sort of goes around today cancel culture and a definition I read was this that cancel culture is a phenomenon in which those who are deemed to have acted or spoken in an unacceptable manner are ostracised, boycotted, or shunned. Well, that could not be further from the heart of God. Think back to the, uh, the Old Testament, the um, amazing story of Jonah. And it's an incredible story because God speaks to Jonah and says, I want you to go to that city and tell them, tell them all about me. Get them to turn from their sin. And you imagine being told that. It's quite something. And Jonah says, no. And he gets in a boat and he sails off in the other direction. So what does God do? Does God get out his list of potential prophets Jonah, or cross him off, who's the next on the list? No. It was a very short list. It only had one name on it, and that was Jonah. Jonah was going to deliver God's message. Jonah might have said no. He might have got on a boat and gone to the other side. But God still wanted Jonah to do it. That's why I have that whole episode of our... A ship and a storm and a whale that regurgitates Jonah and, and, and all of that. It was because Jonah 
was God's choice. Jonah was going to do what God wanted to do. He could do it willingly, or he could do it the hard way. He was still going to do it. And we find in the end, this Jonah was restored and fulfilled his calling. So it is with Peter, actually. This is not a story about rejection. It's not a story about a great disciple who blew it, or therefore thrown out, and let's replace him with somebody else. Who else can take Peter's place? No. God chose Peter. Peter was going to be up there. Peter was going to be doing what God wanted. That was going to be an easy way and a hard way. Peter chose the hard way, but he was still going to be used by God. And and actually, this isn't just a story about a second chance. It's not that God gives us second chances. You get third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances. In fact, you get hundreds of them. You know, when when they said to Jesus, how many times do we forgive people? Jesus says, well, try 70 times 7. And probably a few more after that. That's the standard God wants for us. That must be the standard that God lives by. Constantly recalling, constantly giving new chances, constantly bringing us back to the purposes he has for us. And so that's this first wonderful thing. Whoever you are, however you feel you might have failed, you still matter. You're still on his list. He still has amazing dreams for you. He still has things, actually, that only you can do. And he still wants you to do them. Second thing from this story. No matter what we've done, Jesus never goes away. I love the uh, instruction they were given in one of the Gospels, go to Galilee and he'll meet you there. Where in Galilee? At what time were we meant to be somewhere in Galilee so we could meet him? It didn't seem to matter. Because he knew exactly where they were going to be at any time. And he'd find them there. You know, I, I have this feeling he was probably following them around for days and days and days. He knew exactly where they were. And he found them. And th- they were touched by him. And, and that's so incredibly true for all of us. We don't have to go anywhere to find him. He is with you always. And he never leaves you, and he never quits, and he never goes away. In a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating the the amazing festival of the Ascension. And the Ascension's not about Jesus levitating through the clouds to some distant place a hundred miles away up in the sky. The ascension is all about Jesus beginning to inhabit a whole new dimension. So he is present everywhere, all the time, with every single one of us. That's where he is now, here. With you, whoever you are, whatever you've done, he's still here. Final thing is this restoration. It's all about love and it's not about groveling. You know, I think if I were Jesus, I would love to have made Peter grovel a bit, quite a lot. Are you really sorry? Do you really know how much you hurt me? Can I be really convinced you're not going to do this again? You know, a real public 
repentance would have been quite fun. But it's not what we read. That's not what happens. When Jesus speaks to Peter, it's, it's so beautiful. He speaks to him so personally and so tenderly. What is it, Peter, you really feel about me? I've got a job, Peter, I really want you to do. Do you want to come back? And at the end, the words of Jesus are so beautiful. It's, Peter, follow me. It's along the lines of, I think, you know, I'm happy to have you as one of my own. I'm not ashamed to have you following me. That there's a place for you. And somewhere along the line, I think something inside Peter had to say, yeah. I, I did blow it, but I'm back. I'm, I'm following him. This is the Jesus that we worship. He's amazing. You know, one of my favorite descriptions about the person of Jesus we find in actually Matthew chapter 12. And Matthew has just spoken about Jesus healing the sick, a very beautiful thing. And then he reminds his readers of some words from Isaiah, where Isaiah describes that the coming Messiah that, that we know is Jesus. And he uses these words from, from Isaiah. A bruised reed he will not break. And a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. I guess that when Peter first saw Jesus, he felt very much like a bruised reed or a smouldering wick. He felt very near to breaking point, not knowing what was going to happen in this encounter with Jesus. But true to his character, Peter is, as we've seen, lovingly restored and lifted up from that pit in which he was dwelling. It's not that Jesus was soft on Peter at all. I think he saw right into him. He saw just what a bruised reed he was. And he did not need breaking anymore. So what about us? If you have any sense that there is any kind of distance between you and God, if you feel you've wandered away, if you feel you actually turned around and walked completely the opposite direction because of something you've done, if you just sense that you've blown it, if you feel like a bruised reed or a smouldering wick, you know what? He wants you back. He's missed you. And he wants you to know just how desperately loved you are. He wants you to come back to follow him. To pick up that journey where you may have left it behind. And he's not going to clobber you or make you feel rotten. He just wants you back. Shall we pray? Father, Abba, Father,
Here we are, your children. Your beloved, precious sons and daughters. In whom you delight. Father, you know that sometimes we're, we're like right there on your lap and sometimes you know that we clamber off and run after other things. And you know where each one of us is right now. For each of us, you gave Jesus. And Jesus, you came to seek, to search out, to bring us back to the heart of Father God. And right now, Jesus, you're here with us. Let's just catch that. You might sense him just sitting by you, just being around you. Just in the quiet, talk to him. If you feel something you want to say to him, say it. If you feel you want to come back to him, say it. And Holy Spirit, you are, you dwell within us. Open our hearts to receive even more of the Father's incredible love for us. So in the same way, Peter had a great hope in Jesus, what he did for him. We can sing that hope so sure, um, the promise that God is in us, that we have our hope of glory um, because of what Jesus has done for us. Should we stand and sing praise to him?
are going to take a seat and just give the kids a couple more minutes to come back. Um, so whilst they come, why don't you have a chat with the people around you? Um, kids, if you're already back, why don't you tell your adults what you've been learning about? And perhaps adults, you can tell your kids what you've been learning about um, as well. And we'll pick up in just a couple of minutes. Isn't it wonderful? We all learn so much about Jesus. There's always so much to talk about. You know, the Bible says, um, tells us to speak the truth to one another in love. It's not meant just to be John, as wonderful it was to listen to John. It was not just meant to be your Sunday school teachers, as wonderful as it was, I'm sure, to listen to them. It's meant to be all of us as we learn from the Bible and then we have a good chat about it afterwards. So I hope we'll be able to see that now and perhaps later on in the service as well. We are going to share the Lord's Supper um, together and we've got some words we're going to say all together um, so follow on with the words in bold the Lord is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord it is right to give thanks and praise accept our praise as heavenly father through your son our saviour Jesus Christ and grant that by the power of your holy spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, 
Anyone who is trusting the Lord Jesus and seeking to live for him as their Lord is welcome to communion. Um, that's true whatever age you are, although we do say it's important for kids to understand what they're doing. If you think your child is getting to that kind of age, why don't you have a chat with me or Peter and we can sit down and work out if that's going to be an appropriate thing for your child um, at the moment. Um, and um, whatever denominational background you're from, you are welcome if Jesus is your Lord and your Saviour. Um, the practicalities, um, we have three kind of uh, stations for communion. There's two up at the front here either side. And then there's one at the back between the front door going onto the, the street and the kind of the, the side doors here. So if you're on the back three or four rows, y you guys are going to go round to the back. And um, here's the trick. You need to go through that door first. And then you need to come back through that door there. Otherwise, it all gets a, a, a bit of a pickle. So through that door, around, and then back, and you can kind of file back in. And if you're kind of on the, the fourth row or so forwards, then this side, come down here, and this side, come down here. I hope that's really clear. And um, if I can invite those helping me to distribute communion um, to come to the front now.
powerfully. If we just have the next slide, there's a prayer for all of us to pray together, beginning, Almighty God. Let me pray it on our behalf. We can all say amen at the end. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us by faith with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen, Amen indeed. Well, let's stand and sing our final hymn together. formal time together of course our, our time gathering doesn't end with the service there's time afterwards as well we have tea and coffee um, there's there's food for the kids um, those of us who are in the main session here um, Jesus spoke a word of encouragement to Peter and we need encouragement um, here are some words from the book of Hebrews let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. I wonder who you can encourage over the next 20 minutes of our, uh, of our time together. Hey, the, um, the, the doors at the back, we lock them. Um, that's not because we don't want you to leave. It's so that we can keep our kids safe from the roads. Uh, but you can leave through that door and then follow around. And if you're able to stick around, then we would love that as well. Let me finish with a, a final prayer. Do you love me? And thank you, Father, that by the work of your Spirit in our hearts, we can answer yes to that question. We do love our Lord Jesus. Thank you for his love for us. And as we head out into a new week, help us to serve him, um, help us to honour him, and help us to build one another up. 
and we ask it all for his glory. Amen.